Welcome back to the Chicago Tomahawk. I'm Mike and I'm here with my linemate Matt. And today we're going to be talking about goalie grades for the Chicago Blackhawks. Tampa versus the Habs. The Habs won the last game, miraculously in OT. Let's see if they could do it again today. And Matt wants uh, Tampa to win. And we're going to talk about NHL journalism and how, for the most part, if they're employed by the team, you're just going to be getting a, how do you say, an echo, uh, you know, pretty much an, an echo journalism over here saying how great the team is and uh, and and not giving the honest truth. And uh, we're going to give a shout out to one of our Twitter followers, followers later. But to start it off, I want to give a shout out to the, to the Face Off Hockey Network, our network where we distribute our podcasts and our articles at give them a shot be sure to give uh give the other podcasts a shot on there they're great uh we're really starting to get rolling here and uh, and be sure to check them out guys so to start off we're going to go with our our goalie reviews now i read an article today by carter Baum that i could not disagree more with he is a writer for the chicago blackhawks and he pretty much gave a puff piece on the goaltending for the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, starting it off with Lankinen, uh, I think Lankinen did much better than everybody thought that he was that he would. Uh, he has shown promise uh, before he 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 was playing for the Blackhawks, and he played very well this season. Um, Matt mentioned that he was overworked later on, uh, but I would probably say that I don't think that he got. Um, a good had an opportunity to get a good rhythm. Just playing every day isn't really going to get you into a rhythm. You know, having an off day, a scheduled off day coming up, I think could possibly help goalies. Matt's the goalie expert, so I'm just giving my my personal opinion. But I thought he played better than what a lot of people uh, anticipated. And I think one another one thing that I want to mention is th- these evaluations. I don't want to do any. Um, I don't want to do any saber metrics, you know, or or any any kind of um, a- analytics. I want to do the blind eye test. What did you see with the with the Blackhawks goalie? Because I don't think numbers really give you the, you know, really give you the whole picture. You know, they, they don't really tell you how good a guy is. You know, when it's thirty seconds left in the game, you're up by one. You've got to face off in your own zone. And you have to you have to stand on your head for the next thirty seconds. You know the numbers don't show that kind of stuff. I think Lankinen played great, but as the season wore on, I, I I think he definitely got worn down, and I think that um, he just had uh, he was he he was definitely overworked, and he did not have uh, the support from a defense that could support him and an offense that could efficiently get the puck uh, a puck into the uh, opposing zone without having to face another barrage of shots. Um, what do you think, Matt, on Lincoln? Yes, I think the first half of the season, I guess we could say with Lankinen, that he was making the big save when we needed the big save. And I noticed his post-to-post play, uh, what do you call it, east-west, post-to-post, even if you want to call it like that. It was very fast, very good in the butterfly, and I thought that... His first couple games, I was like, wow, this guy really reminds me of like a Niemi, you know, coming out of nowhere. And um, the second half of the season, like you were saying and what I said too, he he was overworked. I mean, you're asking a rookie goalie to stop 30 more shots than the opposing goalie. It's That's just too much to do. And that article that you were talking about, that guy made it sound like, wow, we have Patrick Waugh, Eddie Belfort, and Marty Brodeur in our system. <laughs> we are going to be golden, you know? <laughs> but that's not the case at all. But if I had to grade Lincoln in on this, well, his, I guess it's his rookie season, uh, I'd give him a B minus just because it's coming out of nowhere like that. And given, like, given the fans' hope when we lose Crawford, I think that was uh, a positive for you know the organization because they we thought it was going to be Subban and clearly he is not the man. Um, we'll get into that next. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It, it, like we were, it, it was a surprise for Lincoln to step up and he if if it came down to who's your who's your starting goalie, I would say Lincoln. 
he's he's the man. He's earned it, and give it to him. Let's see what he can do for a full season, possibly a better defense in front of him. Yeah, I agree 100%, especially what I, I failed to mention about his uh, post-to-post play that I found uh, very impressive, and um, his composure uh, I thought was 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 pretty impressive for a rookie, and yes. he, he didn't seem to lose his he didn't seem to lose his net. You know, he he would he would be in position, you know, pretty much all the time. And and I, I found that very impressive about him. And and yeah. saying that, you know, is probably my biggest critique of the next guy, Malcolm Subban, <laughs> who is who's a great guy. You know, I I've heard that he's a really nice guy and and I hate uh you know to I'm not trying to, you know, badmouth the guy or anything, but I'm just gonna give my honest opinion here. Mm-hmm. Um I would probably give Lincoln in uh, if if we're going to give grades. Yeah, we'll, we'll give grades. I'll give him a a B, uh, because I think that he he impressed yeah. me, and I think that uh, he shows a lot of promise. Moving on to Subban, um, first game he had what he gave up five goals, and um, it wasn't very pretty. He came on, you know, later on he had some good games, and then he'd have some very very bad games. And then he would have some very god awful games, and um, it seemed to be uh, a, a lot of the same thing from him. He was incredibly inconsistent. I found that he lost his he lost his net all the time. He would he would lose track of where he was, and um, he didn't seem very confident to 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 be honest with you. Um, but uh, saying that uh, his post to post play, I thought was terrible. And I don't think that he's an NHL caliber goaltender. It's been the same story every place that he's been to, and that's his inconsistency. He shows flashes of being great, and then, you know, it all just falls apart. So uh, to give a grade, I would probably give him a D minus. What about you, Matt? Yeah, that's about right. I'd say about a D, especially when he was hyped to be, you know, possibly our, our starter. Uh, I agree with you. He he did show some shades, good games, you know, but let's keep in mind, he played Detroit, or if I feel like he played Columbus. He didn't really play like the Carolina Hurricanes a lot like Lincoln and did. And, yeah, and Lincoln you know, and he really showed, man. Yeah. yeah, he played against really good teams, and he held his own. Um, but Subban would always give up that, like, early softy and it's like wow, we're playing behind already it's like yeah. the first five minutes of the game and our first two minutes yeah and, and Lankanen didn't really do that too I mean he did he gave up softies but I don't remember like a lot of them I don't remember him ever I think he might have had one game where he got pulled because he was just terrible but Subban I fe- felt like he could have got pulled almost every loss he played in yeah and I mean, it's it's his third team in what four years? His early career, he hasn't really. It's been a Boston, it's been Vegas, Chicago. I mean, he possibly could be on another team next year. It's just, I think he would be a good AHL goalie. Like you said, he's a nice guy. Comes from a really good family, really generous family. Really, like PK is an awesome guy, and Malcolm, I heard, is just kind of not as. Not as outspoken as PK, but just real classy. And but it's just like you said, it's 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 a business in the end, and he's not really, uh, you know, living up to the hype. Yeah, which is unfortunate because I wanted him to succeed, and uh, that doesn't seem to be the to be the case. So you're what do you you got a D for him? Yeah, I'll give him a D. Uh, I, I mean, maybe a D minus. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I just I, I I'm being generous with Lincoln and two a B minus only because like he's he's a rookie you know he, we didn't expect him to even play too much and he he grabbed it and he he took it you know and I give him credit for that it's not easy playing against Tampa Carolina and Florida three good teams that were you know I mean they were top three in the pretty much top five I think in the league yeah they were and we played very them. explosive yeah we played so. them all the time. You know, because that's all yeah. that we played in our and and he and he showed up, man. We got some wins out of him too. So if they do give him a shot next year, 
Lankinen. Like he's going to be playing, you know, St. Louis now. He's going to be playing, you know, we're going back to normal. He's going to be playing Nashville a lot. Let's see what he can do, you know. Well, imagine give him, him, give him some, a shot. Imagine him playing some softer competition. Yeah, there's going to be, I mean, I consider Phoenix soft. He's going to be running into Phoenix uh, six times or whatever it is, four times now. And uh, who else is weak in our division? Actually, we have a really good division. Yeah, again. Nashville, Nashville was strong in yeah. our division too. We played them, man, and he, you know, he showed Winnipeg, up. Winnipeg, we got Winnipeg, we got Nashville, we got, oh man, Dallas. And these teams are good. <laughs> so, yeah. So moving on to Delia, right off the bat, I'm going to give Delia an incomplete here because yeah, we got enough. one game at the beginning and that was it. You know, and I'm really surprised that this team didn't give this guy another opportunity this year. He should have had an opportunity to play more games, especially with the way that Subban was playing. Um, I, I, I have... Can you even give a scouting report on what you've seen from Delia? And you know, the I, no. Ice Hogs, Ice Hogs don't even count, man, because I don't care. You know what he can do at the AHL level now. You know, I want to know what he can do at the pros, and because that's where I should say the NHL level at the NHL level, because you know that's what where we expect him to be at. And playing at the AHL level, you know, that just doesn't cut it anymore. And I can't, I can't even give this guy a grade because he only played one game. What about you? Yeah, you, you can't and it's against the defending champs. It's, yeah. Okay. And it's not really fair. Like, hey, you're in, kid. Uh, five nothing, right? Or five to one was the. Yeah. Yeah, I it, believe it yeah. was five to one or five to two. It, it's it's a good team, very good team, and we we didn't have Kirby, we didn't have uh, Taser. We were that was a we were a brand new team. Dylan Strom was our first line center. Right. You don't deserve you don't deserve to win. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. So is, that I, his, I don't, is that his new nickname, Dylan? You don't deserve to win, Strom? Dylan, just <laughs> go. Please just. I, you know what, guy? I mean, it worked out for a season with you and the cat, but yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, bud. It's. Uh, I don't think the Kraken are even going to take a crack at him. Yeah. <laughs> so I wish him yeah. the best. Really, I do. I, 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 I'm yeah. sure he's a nice guy, but uh, it's just not working out here. And, and Too inconsistent. Yeah. But Same thing. As for, as for Delia, though, like, yeah. He's he's the highest paid goalie we have. <laughs> I mean, he didn't really. Uh, you're not gonna win too many games when your highest paid goalie is making like a mil, you know. Yeah. And, and it oh, you got other teams like uh, Vegas. They got ten million invested in goalies, and look at their wins. <laughs> look at they make it. Yeah. You know, you got uh, you got Florida. They got Bobrowski. They got he's making ten. They got Spencer Knight. They got that Drieger. They got three good goalies. Yeah. They're spending money on goalies. It's we got we got to spend a little money and or or we got to be patient with Lankinen. So I'm not the GM, so I I don't know what the plan is. Yeah, no kidding. You don't even really want to be the GM right now with what's, go- with what's going on over there. No, no, but he's still got a job to do. I hope he doesn't forget. Yeah, no know, kidding. That- He's got to still take care of the team, and it's not fair to the players. You know, it makes you wonder, man, like, what is going on? Like, what is, you know, Danny Wirtz thinking right now? Thinking, I have an investigation going on. I have a GM that is possibly implicated in this. How do I go forward with the with the draft and with free agency? I, I mean, you got to rely on your scouts, you know, because I'm sure Bowman's staring up at his ceiling every night. What, what the hell am I going to do, you know? Yeah. And then you got free agency, which is, I think, going to be really big for the Hawks, too. They got money to spend, and they we need help. We Some of the young guys aren't ready yet, clearly, and we, we need help, and we got to spend wisely, and we got to try to get guys here to begin with, too. We, we got to hope that guys want to be here with all this stuff going on. Right. Could be It could be a really rough summer, or it could be very lucky. I'm hoping it. I'm hoping it's lucky, like Seth Jones lucky. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. So moving on to uh, from our grades, Lincoln and I gave him a B. Would you give would give him at B minus? Yeah, B minus. Yeah. Uh, we'll give Subban. I give him a D minus. That's across the board. And Delia an incomplete. Maybe we'll see some Delia next year. Who knows, man? Maybe he has an opportunity to be a backup next year. <laughs> but then again, if we do that, is it more of the same? It's going to be the same. I, I think what we need to do is uh, see what's out there, free agency. We might hear some trades uh, happening with goaltending. 
I know uh, Freddie Anderson is a free agent. I don't think the Leafs are going to bring him back. You know, maybe, hey, maybe you want to throw rumors, the guy a two-year deal. I heard deal. rumors that they were talking about it. Uh, I heard that it's going to be really tough, though, with their cap situation. They might have to drop some guys. They don't have any. They lost because they have their top line is just ridiculous. The pay with three, the big three, I guess you could call it. If they have an off night, that team's done. And they had an off playoff. That's why they got smoked. Yeah, they had an off, so off week. Y- you can't have that. So, I mean, I, they're going to be screwed, I think, the Leafs. All right. So, Tampa and the Habs. Matt, do you got a score a score update on that one? Uh, it was 0-0 when we started. I Give me one second. I, I'm hoping it's 0-0 still. It's, yes, we are 12 minutes in. Zero zero. I will say the first period, they said there was thirty eight hits. Wow! It it was awesome, man. It was very physical. Every whistle, there was a scrum. Braden Point has a huge bullseye on his back. They oh, are I'm just, sure he does. They are all over him. Even yeah. when, like thirty seconds after the whistle, they're still going after him. <laughs> so he hasn't had, he hasn't scored this series yet. So they're doing their job. The Habs are doing their job. Yeah, they're no making kidding. Tampa's third and fourth line win the game, pretty much. Yeah, so wow. that's what it's going to come down to. Tampa, man, they they've got some decisions to make this off season, man. Yeah, I wonder who they're going to protect, or um, I'm sorry, not protect. Like, who is going to be the guy that who's going to be the good player that uh, the Kraken are going to steal from the Lightning? I just I don't know. It's gonna, he's going to be a good player though. Man, that's nuts. That's got to be a tough pill to swallow, man. When is Here. Braden Point's contract up? I think he uh, has two more years, maybe. Wow. It's six million. That's what we were just talking about last podcast. Remember the yeah. bridge deal? They used it perfect. Yeah, but the thing was, perfect. was that Braden Point wasn't like a Mitch Marner at the time coming in, you know. And you and you know, highly, you know, touted draft picks come in and they get. You know, they get the cash. They perform a little bit and they get the big money. Well, you know, he if, was a third round pick. No, what I, what I mean is what I mean is, is that if you're a first round pick and you perform pretty decently, you're going to get, get paid. paid faster. Yeah. yeah. But if you're a later round pick guy and you come in and you outperform, they're going to say, hey, you know what? You really weren't supposed to perform at this level. Yeah. We'll give you a little bit of cash and let's see what you do type of a thing. You know, well, well I think Tampa, they um. They probably pitched like, "Hey, we're we're very close here, and you could see that, and you're a big part of it. We want to keep this team. Can you take a bridge deal?" And I think Point agreed to it, sure. obviously, and it paid off. He's got a Stanley Cup, and he might be getting another one very soon. Yeah, he might be getting another yeah. one, and then in a year or two, he might be getting a big payday as well. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think he's when he gets paid, I I think they're going to be very similar to the Hawks. Like I like they're gonna go through some times where, wow, it's just me, Kane. At, I'm not saying like Taves, Kane, uh, Siebes, and Keith, and you're gonna have to build and rely on your uh, free agency and your your draft picks to uh, to blossom and kind of work it in again, like kind of rebuild on the fly. I think it's gonna really catch up to him because Kucherov's making nine million. I think yeah, you got. Hedman's making a lot. Uh, Vasilevsky's, I think he's at eight even. So I mean, how do you it's not gonna, pay those guys? You know, you, you have to. They're, I mean, they're, they're. You can consider them an all-star team the way that Ryan McDonough's making seven, which is a great uh, cap hit. Great cap hit. I, I would love that guy on our team. He's yeah, just, I would too. Did you see the stat with him? I was he actually going to ask games you. than Kaner in the playoffs. Really? Sure, he doesn't have the cups that Kaner has, but right. he has more, more, more Stanley Cup playoff games than uh, Keith and Kane. I saw that stat the other day, and I was like surprised. I'm like, well, shouldn't really brag about well, that, that until you well, have three yeah. cups. Yeah, but that's because yeah. he played on the Rangers for so long. Yeah, and they were always hyped to be good, and they never could get the job done. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know that. I didn't. I I learned it yesterday, and I was like, "You got to be kidding me! Wow, it's crazy." Do you think that that he's going to stay in Tampa? I think they have no choice to keep him, dude. He is, him and Hedman, 
could make the top four re- like really good for years. Just because if they separate those guys, put in another guy, they're going to be a good pair either way. Even if it's a young kid, they're going to be solid. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just curious to just, you know, just thinking, you know, kind of on the fly of what's going on. But yeah, I, I they, think they're going to lose things. more forwards like uh, probably Tyler Johnson's going to be gone. He's making six mil. Really? Uh, sh- yeah. Did, I didn't remember know Tyler were, Johnson was making that much money. Well, they signed him before they won the cup. And right. I, I think he had like a six million, six year, 36 million deal, I think. Okay. But he was put on waivers this year. Like no one claimed deal. him. Yeah. No one claimed him. I and I'm the like, Hawks would have. I was like, we need center help. Grab this guy. And right. he's, he's on the fourth line right now with Patrick Maroon and the, I think, uh, Goudreau. Dude, they've been awesome. I mean, Patrick Maroon's a gamer, man. He's a playoff guy. And Braden, or not Braden Point, I'm sorry. Uh, Tyler Johnson's been, he's little, he's fast. He's getting these guys the puck and they're scoring some big goals. Actually, he wins uh, big time. He wins faceoffs though too, which is a big, uh, I think was a big thing for him. I would love that guy on our team. Yeah, I would and too. I would love, I think he would make a great, even a wing, if we had to put him on the wing. And if you wanted to put Kirby Doc. Or put like him on a, the line with Vinny Henestrosa and, and uh, Brandon oh, Hagel. Jet line would be too fast for, jeez. It'd be great because he can win faceoffs. Yeah, that'd be a great line. I, I can't believe no one claimed him. There's a couple players that were put on waivers no one wanted to touch. I think it was because of the, the COVID, the quarantining thing, uh, possibly. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I, a lot of teams are probably like, dang, we should have took them. But it, it, the cap hit scares them. Six mil cap hit yeah. scares them. But it's not that bad. That's not a bad cap hit for a guy that does a lot. Yeah, that's true. I agree. Yeah. All right, moving on. Something I wanted to talk about, NHL journalism. And I'm curious <laughs> if, if anybody else is finding this to be true because it seems like when you get when you're getting journalism from your favorite team, it doesn't matter who it is, but if they're employed by the team, are you getting fluff pieces about all of the players and not getting, you know, anything, you know, I don't want to say not true, but maybe just, ex, 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 you know, um, accentuating the, the positives and, and not talking about some of the negatives, which need to be s- spoke about as well. Because it seems the Blackhawks seem to do it. Matt, do you notice any other teams doing it too? Oh, well, I'll say this. The the Bruins TV analyst, Jack Edwards, oh my God, he is the biggest homer in the world. But like, yes, I've seen articles like, oh yeah, our guys are so good. They're going to show so much promise. And this guy, he does this. It's like, are we watching the same teams? <laughs> or like, I, I couldn't believe the the article you sent me about the goaltending they have a, i'm like what yeah uh, it's y- marty broder playing for the blackhawks yeah, from the no 90s kidding. come on man to tell it like it is man that's why like people don't like the media <laughs> even <laughs> the sports media i can't stand the chicago sports media i can't yeah you're not getting a fair and i i feel like uh jamal Mayers wants to tell the truth but he's but he getting a paycheck to talk about the Blackhawks, but yeah. you could tell like he'll he'll kind of sh- um, he'll say, well, yeah, he should have he should have uh, I would have done I would have done it this way, but he you know he he he's a young kid and he made a mistake. It's like no, dude, he messed up. They scored and we lost the game. Right, it's his fault. You got You got to call it out, man. Yeah, yeah. I just had this. I just had to say something about that man because after reading that article, I just couldn't believe it. You know what, what I was reading in. You know, just listening to these puff pieces, man, it just sucks because it yeah. makes, you know, the casual fan will read those things and they're like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, they're right. Yeah, they are, really are great. And they're not, you know. No, no. So I just wanted to mention that. I want to mention our buddy Piercy. He wants to talk <laughs> about how terrible Keith will look in a Vancouver jersey. And yes, Piercy, he will look absolutely horrific in a Vancouver Canucks jersey. You know, I, I want him to be happy and I want him to get the deal that he wants. But I don't know, man. I don't think that I could I could take take it seeing Keith in a in a no. Canucks jersey. No way. I mean Burroughs pulled his hair with that jersey <laughs> on and now he's gonna put it on. I no. Yeah. No way. No way. Yeah, that'd be crazy, man. You know, that, that, they have a they have a pretty good team there and uh they got and, some good uh, players. Yeah, they it's do. just that, that rivalry died. With uh, the Hawks, when 
They let Kessler go to the Ducks, and a new rivalry was born for a couple of years, and then that died when Kessler retired, <laughs> if he even did retire. Yeah, I so, don't think he officially retired yet. Yeah, he's, his back is done, I heard, or his knee, whatever. He, he was, he he was played hard. Hip, yeah, he was having hip issues for a little while. I, I thought he had surgery on that. Yeah, I know he's doing like a show, coming to Kessler's house or something. Oh, yeah. I yeah, mean, he's, he, he had Eugenie easier. Bouchard on there. That's, yeah, that, that's a good way to kick it off. You know, he's making money doing easy stuff. Good for him. Yeah. You know, he doesn't have to abuse his body anymore and worry about Taves owning him his whole career. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, man. Do you got anything else? No, man. Just uh, hopefully the, the Lightning can hoist that cup tonight. Oh, we could, gosh. I know. I'm, I'm ready to get the draft going and free agency going. It's always a fun time. I'm usually glue my uh, phone to my hand refresh who <laughs> who signed where and how much and yeah how i can long. usually count on you to send me yeah. updates well i remember my favorite summer was the um I, when, when did we sign campbell was that was that 2010 it was 2010 uh, right? i think or, it was 20 i think it was 2009 okay so that year i remember i got <laughs> i had a or it might be no eight actually i think we had him for a year then the next year we won the cup so yeah it might yeah. be but I was, I had my phone and I, I finally got internet on my phone that year and I'm sitting there and I'm <laughs> working and the guys are like, come on, let's go. I'm like, guys, hey, dude, it's July 1st, UFA day. <laughs> I'm sitting there <laughs> and staring at it and I see Brian Campbell joins the Blackhawks eight years, $7 million a year. And I was so happy. And then we also signed Cristobal Huey. I'm like, I guess, yeah. why not? You know, we got Huey and Hobby Bowen and. And I just remember it was fun, and then the next year, Marion Hosa, I'm like, oh. holy smokes! I mean, it was, it was awesome getting a guy like him, and it's like, oh, we're going for it this year, boys, and we we did, and we won. I just had that and, feeling that when we picked up Hosa, I was like, man, this is the exact player that we need. This is the exact guy. Yeah, it was it. Yeah. I mean, and Niemi, him, and Bufflin stepped up, and it was just a great year. My favorite Stanley Cup winning team, the 2010 Blackhawks, broke their uh, broke the drought. Uh, what was it? 49 years with no cup and started the dynasty. Good times, and Good they're time. gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Going back to the dark ages here, boys. Hopefully not, man. Hopefully not. You know. Yeah. Well, we need a coach. Yeah, we need we a do. GM. <laughs> we need some players. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, do us a favor. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and uh, hit it, give us a, some comments on the social media. We love talking to you. Uh, we love talking hockey. And uh, have a good one. Y'all.